Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Um, I pray that Ramadan is going well for everyone in the Masjid al Wali community. And it's the 18th of Ramadan. So we're in the last stretch, we're in the last 20, last 10 days of Ramadan are just about to be upon us starting on Monday. So from Sunday night, I ask Allah to give us all a blessed and productive Ramadan full of barakah and khair. Uh, in the last session, we were exploring this idea of the signs of God around us. And, you know, we came to this uh, conclusion that Allah's signs, God's signs are everywhere. All we have to do is open our eyes. And um, they are around us during the day, during the night. They're in every manifestation they're in every setting that we may be in, in the cities and urban settings. So and we shared a profound piece of poetry that I'll repeat here again, uh, where the poet said, Wafi kulli shayin lahu ayatun tadullu ala annahu wahidu. In every single thing that exists, there is a sign pointing to the fact that he is one. And that really is true. Um, in today's lesson, we want to explore how Allah discusses his signs. So I want to present some research uh, from the Quran as to the idea of the signs of God, ayat, the signs of Allah. How does Allah discuss uh, this idea in the Quran? And for sure, we know that it is a central Quranic message, the idea of Allah's signs. It's one of the central messages in the Quran. According to my research, no less than 357 verses speak about the signs of God. 357 verses speak about the signs of God explicitly. That's no small amount. So when you do an analysis like this, it shows us the importance of this idea. It's one of the central lessons for humanity, that Allah, His existence, His power, His majesty is manifest all around us through His signs. Now, the very first occurrence of Allah's signs in the Quran is in, is in Surah Al-Baqarah, in the beginning, right in the beginning, after just a couple of pages. Allah says, where he talks about the origin story of humanity, he says, قُلْ نَهْبِطُوا مِنْهَا جَمِيعًا فَإِمَّا يَأْتِيَنَّكُمْ مِنِّي هُدَىٰ فَمَنْ تَبِعَ هُدَىٰيَ فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ In the origin story of human beings, Adam, alayhi salam, he... Um, made that mistake and Allah destined that he would be ejected from paradise and he was sent down to the earth to live in the earth. And Allah made him a promise at that time. And he said to him that, look, you're not going to be left alone. It was a very traumatic experience. You have to understand our life mission as believers is to escape this planet, this earth that we live in and to make it back to paradise. Adam is now stood out in paradise and he was ejected from this place of eternity, place of bliss, this place of pleasure, no pain, to live in this earth, which is full of death and suffering and, and, and pain. So it must have been a traumatic experience. Allah promised him, look, I am going to be sending you guidance. So he's not going to leave us alone. That Allah's promise to humanity. That he did not leave us alone and he will not leave us alone. He will give us the means and the resources for us to find the guidance, either explicitly, directly, or indirectly. And then he promised, for Hudaya, those of human beings who follow my guidance, there is no fear and no sorrow for them. They have no reason to fear for the future and no reason to be remorseful or sad about the past. And then he says, وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَكَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا أُولَٰئِكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ He said after that, uh, so this is still the same message. Allah is speaking to Adam in the origin story of humanity. Allah says, as for those who disbelieve and reject our signs, وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَكَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا أُولَٰئِكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ they will be the residents of, of hellfire living therein forever. So the point being here, my brothers and sisters, 
This is the first occurrence of Allah's notion of Allah's signs, ayat of Allah. And it occurs in the origin story of humanity, which shows you how important it is, the central mission of a believer is to recognize Allah's signs and to believe based upon them and to find the guidance. So now, continuing the Quranic exploration of the ayat of Allah, um, I found that there was, Allah presented the notion of his signs in various ways, and it's very interesting when you explore the various ways that Allah presents his signs or speaks about his signs, um, just the way that Allah speaks about them shows his mercy and shows us and proves the overwhelming mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal. Um, so these signs, so again, from the origin story, Allah promised us that he's not going to leave us alone. He's going to give us guidance, and that would be primarily through his ayat, his signs. So seven verses of the Quran explicitly mention that Allah revealed his signs. For instance, وَلَقَدْ أَنزَلْنَا إِلِكَ آيَيْنَا We revealed to you our clear and manifest signs. So these signs are not just like a riddle in the universe where you really have to think about it. So many, many times Allah reveals them directly, shows the signs to us directly. Uh, so there's this idea of nuzulul ayat, Allah's revelation of the signs. And this refers to several things. It refers to scripture. So Allah periodically revealed scripture, books, to his chosen prophets and messengers. It also revealed punishment, overwhelming signs. So the first exploration or discussion, discussion of the first question, the idea that Allah reveals them. And then in all verse, I speak notion act showing for instance he really shows and from another verse with Firaz verily we showed him actively our signs so this idea of ara ara means to actively not only the first thing we saw that Allah reveals his signs his ayah the second thing he actively shows them to us so that you can't miss them so it's that the signs but it's active, is the process is active. Allah in instances actually shows us these signs. That's 12 verses in the Quran that reference that. 14 verses of the Quran um, reference the idea of bayanul ayat, making the ayat clarified and clear, making the signs of God. So, for instance, in Surah Al in verses of fasting, where in the month of Ramadan, the verses that speak about the fast, those verses, at the end, Allah concludes the entire discussion of Ramadan and fasting following uh, Thus, He made, Allah made clear Clarify signs to his humanity, his signs to humanity, so that they may be aware of Allah, may attain taqwa. So, the idea of not only put signs in the universe, not only did he reveal them, step one, not only did he actively show them the second uh, Quranic discussion, but he makes them clear to us, he spells them out. You know, all of us are at different levels of understanding, some of us. We can see things clearly, but some of us, we need things explained to us in plain language, clarified to us. So this is bayan. Uh, the fourth Quranic discussion of Allah's signs, in four verses, there's this notion of tasriful ayat. So Allah says, Unzur kayf tasriful ayat, thumma hum yastifun, for instance. Look at how we show you our signs in different ways. Tasrif in Arabic, sarafa, means to show again and again, or it means to show you in different, diverse ways. 
So Allah's signs are not just one type, where only one type of person can understand. But Allah reveals His signs in various diverse ways so that human beings can get it and they can find their way to Allah, find their way to guidance. So Tasrif al-Ayat is that in four verses of the Qur'an. In 14 verses of the Qur'an, Allah talks about Tafsil al-Ayat, Fassala. The word Fassala in Arabic means to spell out plainly. Very similar to Tabin. Tabin means to clarify and to explain. But Tafsil explain it even more, even more plainly. So Allah says, وَكَذَلِكَ فَصِلُ الْآيَةِ وَلِتَسْتَبِينَ سَبِينَ Thus, we spelled out plainly our signs so that the way of the criminal be manifest. Allah says, another ذَلِكَ نَصِلُ الْآيَةِ كَذَلِكَ وَكَنُفَصِلُ الْآيَاتِ وَلَّهُمْ يَجِرُونَ be plainly out our 14 verses in this. Uh, this is of the Quran. Verses of the Quran mention the sign sent along with human beings, messengers. So many is Ladi Barumina Rasul and Minhum. Yet Lu Alehim Ayatik. So this idea, the message, Allah chose specific human beings at periodic points in history in order to send additional signs to them, additional to the signs that all already existed in the universe. Allah revealed scripture and verses to them in order that they may convey those signs, those verses to human beings. So, so many verses in the Quran again and again. If, you know, when you look at it, you step back and that Allah didn't leave us alone in this world. He created a world of cosmos of signs. Signs pointing to direction. And clear, the universe is like a roadmap pointing to Allah. There is no way to look at this roadmap this, with, a, with a objective eye. Um, free of preconceived notions and free of uh, biases and agendas and not come to this conclusion that there is a benevolent Lord uh, behind all of creation. Um, so look at even in Allah's scripture, Allah's book, the Quran itself, 357 verses uh, reminding us that Allah has signs. Allah placed signs, ayat, in all of creation. And not only that, Allah revealed those signs. Allah actively showed those signs to us. Allah made those signs clear to us, not as riddles. And Allah showed those signs in different and diverse ways to us. And then Allah spelled those signs for us plainly. And finally, Allah chose human beings to share those signs with us, to show us the way. After all of this, after human beings see all of this, and we still reject faith, we still reject Allah Azza wa Jal. You realize then the, the the fault, there is no one to blame but the rejecter, the one who rejects the signs of God. They are so clear, clean, uh, so clear, so plain, and so overwhelming around us. So the signs of Allah, my brothers and sisters, all around us, uh, we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to give you a blessed uh, rest of Ramadan, uh, and especially the last 10 days, uh, I shared in my khutbah today some advice about the last 10 days that, you know, there are two great mercies in this month. Uh, the first mercy is that Allah made a seed the month of Ramadan, a month of khair and barakah. And the second great milestone in this month is the last 10 days. The last 10 days. So they're just uh, upon us. Um, and these last 10 days need to be planned. Aisha uh, radiallahu anha, she said, كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا دخل العشر when the last 10 days uh, would enter or come upon uh, the Muslims, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم شد مئزره وأحيا ليله وأيقظ أهله There are three things she described him as. She said, first of all, when the 10 days came, 
he would tighten his belt. Tightening your belt is a metaphor, is an expression that means that you're getting ready, you're planning, and you're pushing yourself harder. Because when you work out, you wear a belt in the gym, right? And also when you tighten a belt, it puts you in that mindset to push yourself, to strive, to exert yourself. So this is what this means, that the Prophet got ready to push himself, exert himself more than he ever did before. And that's how we need to approach these last 10 days. Get ready, my brothers and sisters. Prepare yourself. Uh, schedule your uh, your days around these 10 nights. They're so valuable. And then he, the second description for Ahya Layla, he would stay awake in the nights of these 10, uh, this ten, last 10 period. Um, in this period, the nights are more valuable than the days uh, because of Layla Tul Qadr. So he would awaken, stay awake during the nights. Finally, he would awaken his family members uh, and uh, you know help them stay awake and take advantage of this blessed time. The prize of these last 10 days is the night of Laylatul Qadr, the night of Laylatul Qadr that the Prophet and Allah described and the Prophet also described, khayrun min alfi shahr, a night that is better than a thousand months. That's incredible when you reflect over that, brothers and sisters. One night better than a thousand months. A thousand months is 83 years. Our scholars mentioned the reason it's 1,000 months is Allah gave us one night a chance to catch up on a lifetime of worship, and not a lifetime of the average human being, which is 60 or 70 years, but a full lifespan, a full and generous lifespan of 83 years. So in one night, Allah gives us the reward of 83 years of worship. And this is something amazing. All of us need to plan our nights to catch this blessed time period. The Prophet Wasallam used to say in the beginning of Ramadan, reminding people about this night, he said, Man hurima khayraha faqad hurim. The one who misses this night is deprived indeed. So we don't want to be in that situation, brothers and sisters, that we miss the night of Laylatul Qadr, a night that's worth a lifetime of reward. So all of us should plan our schedule. May Allah give us this night, um, strive harder, make dua on this night, um, read Quran, do good deeds, do charity as much as we can. In these last 10 days, and especially trying to seek Laylatul Qadr, Allahumma Balligna, Laylatul Qadr, Allahumma Taqabal Minna Siyamana, Allahumma Taqabal Minna Qiyamana, wa Rukuana, wa Sujudana, wa Sa'ira Amalina, Ya Azizu, Ya Ghafar, wa Sallallahu, wa Sallam, ala Nabina Muhammad, wa ala Alihi, wa Sahbihi, wa Sallam, Salam alaikum, wa Rahmatullahi, wa Barakatuh.